Welcome everyone to today's Empyrean Workshop Showcase. Join me as we take a look at the Kathana. So today's design is the Kathana and this is updated for 8.5 with the retractable turrets now. And this is an unlock level 25 size class 8 capital vessel coming to us from creator Dan Bolo. This has a nice design and when the outer wing sections feels more like a real ship that we would expect to see in some kind of science fiction setup. When the weapons are retracted it has a very nice sleek exterior look to it and then of course BAM you activate all of the weapons and you have a heavily armed ship. I am also a fan of what I assume to be shock absorbers on the top of each wing which makes it feel like they're allowed to flex a little bit. So most designs we end up having the hangar bay access at the rear of the ship but in this case it's actually in the front just underneath where the bridge is. We have a nice set of shutter doors to open up revealing of course the hangar bay door and a nice ramp extending down. The hangar gives you a very large open spacious room to put some hover vessels in. We also have our repair bay module in here as well as two small parking spots on one side for smaller hover vessels and of course some cargo boxes in case you need to store some cargo down here. To the sides of the elevator at the back of the ship, we have our medical station, a clone chamber, an O2 station, a fridge, and food processor. On each side towards the back of the room, you will find doorways that lead into your fuel storage areas. And along the starboard side of this room, you will find a sectioned off separate room. In this room, we have our repair bay control console, a passenger seat and towards the very front a pilot seat so you can actually pilot from down here in case your bridge gets damaged. Bay doors, there's actually two small shutter doors. Each of these shutter doors will open up to a room where you have a medic station, O2 station and a medical scanner. Another door that leads into the lower section of an elevator that will take you up top to more sections of the ship as well as another door leading into a small storage room with four cargo boxes. And then we have another door that opens up revealing an extending ramp that gives you foot level access to the surface of the planet or moon you are parked on. Taking the elevator at the back of the room, we go up to the next open door and that door leads into the actual warp drive chamber. Continuing to the top of the elevator, we have a shutter door that opens up to reveal our grow plot area. Now Dan Bolo took a little bit different approach with this grow plot area than some other creators do. So instead of filling the entire set of grow plots in, Dan decided to have only nine put in place in the default design. This means you only have to worry about producing nine grow plots to put in the factory to make the design. When you need to expand further, there are three more sections of nine where you take out the walkways and put in new grow plots. That means each side just by removing the walkways will give you a total of 36 grow plots for 72 grand total. But wait, there's more. If you need more grow plots than this, you can take out the combat steel blocks along the outer edges, which are different from the tile flooring. And this will expand your total all the way up to 48 grow plots on each side or 96 total. Now of course we have to have our food processing and storage in here so we have at the back two food processors and six fridges total. They are split to red and green, red being for your medical production, green being for your food production. So if you want to separate everything out you can do that. On the other far side of the room we do have a nice little crew quarters with some bunk beds and a wardrobe. Immediately to the left and right of the elevator where we came into this room, if you take these stairs going up, you come into another small room where you have a nice lookout over the grow plot area, and then going through the door, you lead to an outside small vessel parking area. Now continuing forward from the elevator of this room, we come through another door that leads us into the main area of the ship. Taking the door to the left, we come into what I would expect to be a lounge area, though it does have a bed and shower combo at the back, so this could be the captain's quarters. However, honestly, if I was the captain, I would not want it where people can be in the grow plot area looking inside my bedroom. Taking the door to the right, we come into the cafeteria, where you see we have some people eating and we have somebody trying to place an order. You will also find I'm assuming typos, though these could be intentionally spelled wrong just to make it more interesting. 
Moving into the next larger room, one thing I noticed that definitely stands out as a cosmetic flaw is there is a bump in the carpet. But ignoring that, we do have a very large open kind of lounge area here, or more like a reception area. It's just very open, room for people to kind of sit down, relax, talk, do whatever they need to do while they're keeping things running smoothly on the ship. On both the port and starboard sides, when facing towards the back of the ship, you will find doorways that connect into the elevators we saw earlier. These are the ones that connect down to the small side rooms that give you foot level access outside of the ship. But that's not all these elevators are for. At the middle point between the lowest level and the upper level, you will find a door leading into another room. On the starboard side, this is for the armory area where you will find several armor lockers as well as storage containers named for the crew member that that belongs to. You will also have a nice view down into the hangar bay below. On the port side of the ship, you will find instead of an armory, the medical bay. As you come in, you will first immediately have a medic station to your left, and then along the length of the room, you'll find your different medical scanners, as well as some bunk beds at the back, so you can, of course, recover your stamina here. On the starboard side of this room, there's also a hallway that leads you past an enclosed area where you will find your offline protection, your warp drive fuel tank, and your gravity generator, as well as some crew members at the back doing some work. Taking the elevator in the middle of this room leads you up to a single door that leads you outside to the primary small vessel landing pad towards the front of the ship. Walking past the elevator on the right side, you will see that you have three advanced constructors and turning to the left, the shutter doors will reveal your cargo boxes. At the end of this section, we have another small little lounge area as well as an O2 station in the wall, a medic station on the other side in the wall, some couches, and then we have a doorway and another doorway to the side. The automatic door leads you into a small bathroom area where you do have a counter, your toilet, and what looks to be maybe baby changing stations. Moving through this semi-star shaped shutter door area here leads you into the back of the cargo area where you have access to the same cargo boxes you saw earlier, but also access to your ammo boxes, harvest cargo boxes, and a couple of more cargo boxes. Continuing up the stairs here, we go through the door into the lower bridge area, where you'll see on one side we have another medic station, and on the other side we have an O2 station. But continuing up the stairs here, you'll go into the main bridge area, where you will see a couple of crew members in there helping with managing everything, some nice display screens, as well as pilot seats at the front. Now the ship does come with two specialty switches. The first one is battle mode. Turning this on will of course deploy all of your weapons, and turning it off will retract everything inside. The second switch is for mining mode. Now turning on mining mode in my game, when I tested this, showed that it would deploy the retractable drill turret, but also open the shutter doors concealing the mining drill lasers. However, it did not affect the drill lasers themselves. When looking at the signal logic for the lasers, they were not included in the signal. Now that may be an oversight by Dan, or it could be a glitch with it spawning in in my game. Once again, this is the Katana Capital Vessel, and it is an unlock level 25 size class 8 design. It comes with 23 fuel tanks for a total of 138,000 fuel, and with thrusters, weapons turned off sitting still, I have 95 hours of use. Turning on thrusters, RCS, and battle mode to deploy all the weapons, it drops it down to 40 hours of use, so you will need to make sure you turn these things off when you are sitting still. It carries 40 oxygen tanks for a total capacity of 80,000O2 and needs 5,721 oxygen to fill it up, which is spread across only 6 ventilators. It also carries a total of 6 oxygen stations, 6 medic stations, and the one clone chamber in the hover vessel bay. When it comes to weapons, this is fully loaded. It has 6 pulse lasers, 2 retractable cannon turrets, 6 retractable minigun turrets, 4 retractable rocket turrets, 4 retractable plasma turrets, 2 retractable artillery turrets, 2 sentry guns, 4 rocket launchers, and 6 retractable pulse laser turrets. It also comes with a nice 63 cargo boxes total which are spread around the ship, as well as 10 ammo boxes. There's also 9 fridges, 3 food processors, and the 3 advanced constructors. 
Now, resource-wise, this is not the cheapest thing when it comes to Sathium and Iron, but it's also not the worst. The real catch is going to be the 4,744 Arrestrum Enzascosium, as well as the 4,490 Neodymium, because of the weapon choices. Also, because there are NPCs in the default design, you will need some gold, so make sure you take them out if you do not want to have to worry about gold for this. And as I pointed out earlier, it only requires 9 growing plots, and gives you room to expand later so you're not stuck having to make a massive number of grow plots to get this running. Overall, I really like this ship. It has a really nice cosmetic design to it, and there's only a few places where it seems out of place, such as the bump in the carpet that I pointed out. I am also appreciative of the design with the grow plots where you still have some to get started and can add more as needed plus with a little bit extra expansion room if you want to take out the combat blocks. Well, once again, this is the Kathana, and it comes to us from creator Dan Bolo. If you want to check it out, I will have a link in the description below, and of course, if you like it, be sure to leave Dan a thumbs up and a nice comment on the workshop page. That is it for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave me a like, leave me a comment, and hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. As always, I'm your host, Mr. Spicy. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to keep it spicy this week and I will see you in the next video.